You guys have been asking more and more about traditional drawing, and I think this is so great. You really get that it's important to be able to draw something before you can paint it. There's really no getting around this. So my answer to this idea has been a couple months in the making, and it's called Control Paint Unplugged. And what we're going to do here is traditional drawing. Now, yes, I do record these in Photoshop, and I'm not using a real pencil, but everything else about it is traditional. I'm not using layers, none of those digital tricks. Everything you do here is designed to be reproduced at home with copy paper, a pencil, and an eraser. Nothing fancy. So today, we're drawing spoons. And I'm going to use spoons as an introduction to an idea which is called gesture drawing. And what you're doing here is you're not drawing the careful contours, but rather you're drawing the general sense of something. And this is a great way to get more comfy with drawing. So I'm going to use the side of my pencil here, and I'm going to draw a straight line in the general orientation that the spoon is laying in the table in front of me. And this is sort of like the direction that the shadow is cast on it, directly below the spoon. And then I'm going to divide this up because my spoon has about one third of it as a head. So that's up here. And then at the very end, it ends. So you've got a spoon head. And I'm just going to start drawing from my shoulder, really loosely roughing this in. And then this connects to a big arch, which ends at the bottom. So you can see here that those lines ahead of time gave me where to start and stop my mark. So if I were to erase this, and I'm using a kneaded eraser, that's sort of a soft eraser, although you could use a vinyl eraser if you wanted to. So when I go to draw my arch, I'm not going to draw it slowly and carefully like this. I know where I'm starting, which is right here, and I'm stopping down here. So I can just make a quick mark, bam, arch. Same with my oval. I know that it's going to be starting here and stopping here. So I can just draw from the shoulder, nice and fast. These kind of fast marks are really what you want to be laying down. This is the ideal type of drawing. So if I wanted to refine this gesture a little bit, I could do that. And maybe at this point I'd switch to the tip of my pencil, which is going to give me a sharper, slower mark, because it's going to physically dig into the surface of the paper more, and that'll slow me down. So here I know that the tail end of the spoon is actually a bit flattened, and I can make a little more specific mark here. And maybe I'll work on this transition between the head of the spoon and where it connects to the shaft. But these things aren't as important as the gesture itself, because the gesture is sort of an understructure. So let's try another one. So here we go. I'm starting with the side of my pencil. And this is important, because this is what you can make nice, gentle marks with. So here's my general direction. This is my spoon. And this next phase, marking off that third mark, the how much of the spoon is a head, is a pretty important thing. And this is where visual measuring can really get practiced. A lot of what you're doing when you're drawing is just seeing. So if I see the spoon as the wrong proportions at this phase, the rest of the drawing is not going to be right. For instance, let's say these are the right proportions, but what I drew was here's the line, and the head is about like that, and here's the tail. Well, I could draw the most beautiful spoon here, but it would have this giant head. And even if the details were all right, it looked, you know, pretty beautiful, that doesn't look anything like what's on my table. So those proportions, which is really what you're going for with the gesture, sort of proportion and general sense of an object, well, they're all wrong right here. This is not what I want at all. So we'll assume I got this right. And it's pretty close looking at it. Next, I'm going to draw 
the major arc. So one good mark. All right. And then this kind of S curves up through the spoon. And then there's a head shape. So sometimes you can even think of the internal contours. So here the profile of the spoon goes like this. And if I were to draw it in a total profile view here, this is what you'd be seeing. It goes up, down, and then loops around. And there's a bit of a straight bit here. So once again, it's this loose gestural phase that I'm drawing with the side of my pencil and really making long flowing marks that's going to help define so much of the drawing to come. Even if I were to erase this away a bit with the kneaded eraser just to kind of lighten it up, just enough to show me a little structure, and then go in and refine the specifics of what this spoon looks like, it's still that under skeleton that's going to define so much. So it's important to get that initial looseness that you'll then tighten up later. But it really helps the drawing in the long run. So I'd say that this phase, the tightening phase that I'm doing right now, not important. At this point, forget about it. I want to give you some homework. I don't know if you're going to art school right now, never plan to go to art school, whatever it is, these are going to be basic drills like you might get at an art school. So for this one, 20 spoons. They're going to be gestures, so it doesn't need to be all that detail. In fact, you could do the entire thing with just the side of your pencil, if that's how you want to do it. All you're really going for is the general sense and good proportions. Now, you might find that 20 spoons, you're starting to really get the hang of it then do 30. This is one of those things where repetition really does count. So have fun with this. Get used to the side of your pencil. You may have never drawn with that before. And draw some spoons. Thanks for watching, guys.